This is a complete fitness guide for dummies. I'm Dr. Davis. I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started with fitness. Stop trying to follow some complicated fitness programs. Stop trying to keep up with the latest trends. It, none, none of it, none of it matters. If you just do these five simple things, you don't have to worry about anything else. I promise. If this was all you did for the rest of your life, you would be totally healthy and you would get the vast majority of the benefits of physical exercise for your general health. Let's make it easy. Exercise does not have to be complicated to be effective. Simple squats like this can be extremely effective for lower body strength and mobility. You don't need to be doing corrective exercises. You don't need to be stretching. You don't need to do myofascial release. You don't need to follow some complicated set and rep scheme. You don't need to do any of it. It doesn't matter. So again, let's make it easy. All you need to do if you're entering into fitness is do some kind of work on your upper body, some kind of work on your lower body, something where you push stuff and something where you pull stuff. That's it. The only additional thing is do some form of cardiovascular training that you enjoy. In other words, that could be walking. Yes, walking. Just going on walks on a regular basis absolutely 100% counts. You don't have to run. You don't have to do interval training. You don't have to bike. You don't have to be able to have variability between walking, biking, and swimming. You don't have to do any of it. Just do some kind of cardio that you enjoy. You like hiking? Go hike. You like swimming? Go swim. So again, I'll repeat it. Do some upper body, lower body, pushing and pulling, and then go do some cardio once in a while. That's it. So I'll show you what those mean and I'll give you some examples for home. A quick side note for anybody who's watching who's like, well, but you can get more benefit if you do drop sets and all this other complicated shit. Okay, bro, back off. This is for beginners. We're trying to make exercise easy because could you technically have slightly more benefit if you did some complicated program? Sure. But are you gonna get 80 or 90% of the general benefit of general exercise if we just do something simple, but we do it consistently? Yes. So let's get people to 80 or 90% of the benefit first. And then if we want to make 1% improvements from there, we can talk about it. But let's get people on the bandwagon. We have such an a, an epidemic of uh, sedentary lifestyle and diseases that are preventable based on that sedentary lifestyle and inactivity. People are out of shape. People are un unhealthy and it's not that hard. It's not that complicated to do something good for your body. Don't make it complicated. You got this. Okay. So we've got four quadrants, right? We've got upper body. We've got lower body. We got pushing and we've got pulling. So in upper body pushing, here are some examples. All right, let's get our basics down first. Knees down, we got push-ups. Easy peasy. Does it matter if your hands are close in or if your hands are far apart or if your elbows are more out or more in or if you're doing more of like a yoga push-up? No, it doesn't matter. Do which everyone feels good. They've, they're all good for your body. It does not matter. I promise none of them are dangerous. Pick one that feels good and do it. So generally speaking, I would start with knees down and get used to doing push-ups. Make sure that it's not painful and then eventually we can progress from there. You can also do incline push-ups on a staircase. That would be an easier way to get into push-ups. The other one you're gonna wanna get used to is a simple bench press. This is super standard. Honestly, it doesn't, again, doesn't matter if you're doing it with the elbows in or if you're doing it with the elbows out. It really doesn't make a huge difference. Just pick one and do it. Okay, but how much weight should you be picking up and how many reps should you do? Okay, for everything that I'm about to recommend, I just want you to follow a very, very simple, simple, simple rule. Do three sets of 10 repetitions and do that every other day. Okay. Yes, there are benefits to doing more or less or heavier or lighter weight. Forget it all. It doesn't matter if you do three sets of 10 repetitions and you do that every other day. That is a fantastic place to start. Okay. So how heavy should the weight be? Well, when you get to 10 repetitions, you should feel like you worked hard. You should feel like maybe if you gave it maximum effort, as I'm coming up on 10 repetitions here, nine, 10, maybe I could do a couple more 11. Oh, maybe I could do 12. Yeah, I think I can do 12. 13, oh, 13's really pushing it. I don't know if I could do, okay, I got 13, but 14, I get to 14 and uh, I can't do 14. 
So if you do 10 repetitions of a thing, of any exercise, and you feel like you could have done a few more reps, but you definitely could not have done 10 more, that's a good place to be. That's how heavy your weights should be. And if, again, if this is all you ever did for the rest of your life, you're gonna get like 80 or 90% of the overall benefit of exercise. And you don't ever have to worry about making it more complicated unless you want to. Okay, now we've got upper body, pulling exercises. So here we go. A good old fashioned bicep curl is a really good upper body pulling exercise. In the clinic, one of the exercises I give most often, especially for neck and shoulder pain, is this bent over back fly. Here I'll change angles so you can see what I'm doing. So it's just pick some weights and we're gonna put them straight backwards and let them go down. Don't worry too much about your form. Shoulders go back, shoulders relax. Shoulders go back, shoulders relax. And then getting some kind of row in to your routine is also gonna be really important. So again, this is just a upper body pulling exercise. Okay, now we gotta do lower body. So what is a lower body push? Well, it's anything that uses your quads. So push is gonna be squats. So squats are good. Eventually you're gonna to wanna to pick up a weight and hold that weight as you do squats. And these are called goblet squats. Another lower body push is a lunge. So lunges are nice and easy and you can do them forward. You can do them sideways. And you can even do little curtsy squats. And these are kind of nice. So we just curtsy squat. Okay, then we've got lower body pulling. And that's basically anything that uses your glutes and hamstrings. A good place to start is on the ground, just doing normal bridges here for your glutes. And then you could try single leg bridges once those are too easy. You can try a single weight, um, single leg Romanian deadlift, where we just hinge forward, stretch out the hamstring and come back up and you can add weight to that once that becomes too easy. And then of course, grabbing weight and doing a good old fashioned deadlift is perfectly safe and really important for low back strength and lower body strength. Exercise does not have to be complicated. If you just do, pick, pick one or two exercises from each category and put them together, that's a workout. Done, that's it. So you do an upper body push, an upper body pull, a lower body push, a lower body pull, and then probably do something for your abs as well. Do some sit-ups, some planks, something like that. Um, and then just do three sets of 10 repetitions for everything, and that's enough. And then just do some cardio on the side. Go for a walk for 30 minutes, do some running, hiking, biking, swimming, whatever you like, and you're gonna get your benefit. If that's all you did for the rest of your life, you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna be quite, quite healthy. And you wouldn't really need to worry about anything else. Oh, what about stretching? Good news, everybody. You don't have to stretch. It's not that valuable. Um, if you enjoy stretching, go for it. But it's not necessary. Being more flexible does not enhance your life in any way. You do not need to stretch before you exercise in order to prevent injury. And we have tons of literature on this. You don't need to do it. I promise you. Stretching does not reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. Stretching does not improve your cardiovascular health in any way. It does not improve the fall risk in the elderly. Um, it really doesn't do anything for you. So if you enjoy it, it's totally fine to do it. It's not bad for you, but if you're just trying to get started, you don't need to complicate your life by having, oh, I gotta stretch these muscles and do that mobility exercise and foam roll and ah. Just get started with something simple. You're gonna do fine. The best program in the world is the one that you actually do. So if you're creating barriers for yourself, oh, I don't know how to exercise, exercise is too complicated, it's gonna take too long, it doesn't have to be long. Pick one from each category that I just told you, upper body, lower body, push and pull, and that takes 30 minutes. Do three sets of 10 of each of those four exercises, and that's it. That's, that's it, it takes 20 or 30 minutes. So it's easy, it's simple, as long as you are consistent, you are gonna get the, bene the benefit of these exercises. I'm Dr. Anthony Davis, movement is medicine, motion is lotion, I'll see you in health.